So let's have a look at what's new in Affinity Publisher 2. 2.3 in fact, Page Layout and Design Powerhouse. So what's new in Affinity Publisher? Page Layout and Design Powerhouse. Well, think you know publishing software? Think again. Optimised for the latest tech on Windows, Mac and iPad and chosen by Apple as its Mac App of the Year. Affinity Publisher is the next generation of professional page layout software. From books, magazines and marketing materials to social media templates, website mockups and more. This incredibly smooth, intuitive app gives you the power to combine your images, graphics and text to make beautiful layouts ready for publication. No subscription. Ever. Create killer layouts for any project, digital or print, simple or complex. There's everything you need to create the perfect layout. Bring your text to life in creative new ways. Flow text along a path. Link styles across all your pages. Add artistic text, unique decorations, drop caps or more to make your typography stand out. Make a lasting impression. Prepare memorable research papers and portfolios or produce striking visual presentations, CVs, resumes and detailed reports. Collaborate like never before. Package your document alongside all used images and font resources before transferring to a colleague. Or collate multiple files to create one large document like a book or annual report. Produce the most ambitious, content-rich combination designs. Pull in raster or vector assets from multiple sources. Link or embed images with full resource manager. Float graphics. Pin in line with text. Place PSD, AI, PDF, JPG, TIFF, DWG or Affinity files. Ultimate compatibility. Want to work with other file formats? No problem. Merge documents from external data sources. Swiftly integrate text and images. Links into your document by merging from any text, CSV, JSON or Excel files. Perfect for creating certificates, business cards, badges, tickets, form letters, envelopes and catalogues. Incredibly professional output every time, for both digital and print. Take control of your colours with Pantone support, end-to-end -end CMYK and ICC colour management. Set over print controls and add bleed. Get live warnings for possible areas. Trim, crop, marks and more. Work across Windows, Mac and iPad. With Publisher now available for iPad, you can work on your projects wherever you are, whether you're on the move or at your desk. Buy it separately or get as part of the universal license. You can learn more about Publisher for iPad in the following slides. Work wherever and whenever you want, without compromising the quality of your work with Affinity Publisher for iPad, a professional page design app that allows you to create on the go. It is everything you need to produce stunning brochures, posters, portfolios, magazines and much more, no matter where you are. Touch Focus UI, user interface that is. Every tool, panel and control has been meticulously designed for touch, giving an incredibly immersive experience. Quick Menu gives you fast access to clipboard options and up to nine customizable shortcuts, just a single gesture away. Compact Mode for the layer panel simplifies your display, freeing up valuable space for the really important stuff, your work. iPad 16 Ready, iPad iOS 16 Ready. Includes full optimization of the new virtual memory swap, dramatically increasing performance 
so working on large documents is a breeze. Lay it all out with just the touch of your fingers. You can effortlessly and seamlessly produce spectacular layouts and designs ready for print or digital publication. The most fluid workflow, just like the desktop version. If you own the other Affinity apps, you'll be able to switch between their various tool sets without ever leaving Publisher. Experience an unmatched workflow. If you own the other apps in the suite, you can instantly switch to the photo editing features of Affinity Photo and precise vector tools of Affinity Designer without ever leaving Publisher. It's the most wor fluid workflow ever conceived. Seriously. Endless capabilities. Now that we've had a quick look through the Affinity Publisher version 2 What's New document, let's have a look in detail at three or four of the really useful additions to this new version. They're quite straightforward, but they will certainly enhance your design experience. So let's have a quick look at them, shall we? So let's talk about some of the new features to be found in Affinity Publisher version 2.3. So let's have a look. Now one of the first things that I really like is Find and Replace. That now includes the scope and the results count. And you can do that in Publisher, as I just mentioned. It's available on the Windows, Mac OS and iPad versions. The Find and Replace panel in Publisher now includes the ability to limit the scope of the search document to the current spread, current story and current selection. Also included is a result count to quickly show the number of instances your search criteria fulfills. Now I don't know how often I've wanted this, but let's have a look at how it works. Now I've got Alice in Wonderland up here already. Let's have a look at Alice and we'll get her centered there. Now there's Alice there. And I'll just copy that in case I need to use a copy of Alice. And I'll go up to the Find and Replace panel. And you can see I've got Alice in there already. Um, I want to replace Alice with Mary. Now the scope is on the page. Or I could go to the spread, the section, the document, or the whole story, or the selection. You can select an area of the page. So I'm just going to leave it on the page and there are eight results. You can see that eight results on that page and there they are there and you can go to any one of them and they're all there and you can find them really quickly and just see that they fit. So let's leave it on that one, shall we? Now, do I want to replace one of them or all of them? Let's replace all of them or just one of them. There's Alice has been replaced with Mary and you can see that just there. And there's the second Alice there. Replace all. Let's go to find again. Now it's only finding seven results, you see. Replace all. Now there they go. Go to find again and I'm still on the page. And it's not finding any results. How cool is that? Now let's switch that back by typing in find M-A-R-Y by finding Mary and place, replace it with A-L-I-C-E because it is Alice in Wonderland and only on this page because that's where we are and we're going to replace all. See that one there? Find Mary, replace with Alice on the page, click find, and that's found them all. Now let's replace them all. And there they go. Alice, 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 and so on. And now there's no, none of them there. Isn't that really cool? The next one that we want to look at in Affinity Publisher version 2.3 is custom text variables. Now this is available also, of course, in Windows, Mac, and the iPad version. Affinity Publisher now has the ability to define custom text variables as fields. This allows you to add new fields and assign whatever value to them you wish. 
Within the Fields panel, you will now see a section for Custom. OK, so let's have a look at that. I'll just put that out the way for the moment. Now, we can see that we've got here, I've put a field in there. It's a, it's a text box, as you can see. And I'll just put that Move Tool back there so I don't accidentally change it. Now, what we've got there is the Fields panel. I've separated that out so you can see it. Now, the standard thing like Author is in the top there. The title is that one there, so they're already in place. But we've got Price, which is a custom field. Now, if I want to add another custom field, I'll just go down one a little bit there, and I'll add a field, and I'll call it Location. And the value can be anything you like, and I'll put my shop. OK. There we go. Location, my shop. Now, if I want to put that into that text box, I just double click on it. There we go. And that's all there is to it. Of course, what I need to put in there in front of the field is, <coughs> excuse me, location, my shop, and that's the field that it goes in. Easy as? OK, let's do it again. Price, and double click on that field there, 25. Now, if I want to change that to £12.50, for example, it changes both instances of that. So that custom field is really powerful, and you can have some fun with that. If you've got, if you've got a menu full of prices, you can just change them once, and it changes throughout the document to whatever that field is. How's that? That's very nice. OK. Let me pause that there before we move on to the next really nice item. Another really useful feature we've got, especially for academic um, texts or uh, business texts, is the ability, let me bring this over, to do cross-referencing. The ability to insert cross-references from one part of a document to another, for example, for more information, see page 24, has been added to Affinity Publisher. On desktop, cross-references are managed on the cross-reference panel, Window, References, Cross-reference. To access this feature on iPad, press the three-circle ellipse icon on the right-hand side toolbar and select the cross-reference option. Now, let's see that in practice. Now, what I've got here is this text. It's a pop there, a large rabbit hole under the hedge. Now, I'm just going to put in that text there, go across to the cross-reference, because you get to that by Windows, Reference, and Cross-reference is ticked. You can see that there, and that brings up the Fields panel, and we've got cross-reference. Now, I'm looking for a cross-reference. Let's say it's page 28 that we want to look at. So it puts that there, page 28, that there, and it goes over there. See page 28. Now, I could also put that down there. See, A-G-A-I-N-C again, and Cancel. See, uh, it was set out. Where, oh, there it is. See, again, I lost where I'd put it. Go to target. Go to cross-reference. Insert cross-reference. That's OK. That's OK. Edit cross-reference. See page 26, or is that 28? That's 28. Okay, 
and there it is there. See again page 28. So you've got a cross reference inserted there. Now if I'm on that, see page 28, that's page 28. Now I want to go to page 28, go to target and it pops me over to page 28 and somewhere on there will be what I'm looking at. That's page, yes that's page 28. There we go. So it's just to reference page 28. Now you, it doesn't actually go to a particular point but it will go to the page it's referenced on and that's all you need really. So and that's the same page and that's all there is to that. Cross-referencing. Let's go back. We use that one there. Go to cross-reference and that's it. See again page 28. So it's all controlled by those fields there. Now you can check all spreads, current spread, or you can look for page 21 or anything you like. Let's look at page 32 and look for a cross-reference. and close. There we go. Window, references, cross-reference. Brings the window back. Now I'd suggest you uh, play around with that a little bit and just see how it works. It's very powerful. It's not done with um, URLs or links. It's a cross-reference. It's a true cross-reference. Very useful in all sorts of technical books academic books, user manuals, things like that. Okay, there are also in our next section additional options when creating indexes in Publisher and this is available on the Windows, the Mac and the iPad versions. On the index panel you'll find new options that provide increased control over the presentation of index entries. In addition to being able to customize the words that precede cross-references within an index, six new options are available. After the topic, between items, between ranges, before references, after references, and see also, also. And inserting special characters. Commonly used special characters are easily inserted into your custom separator text. On desktop, click the arrow at the left of the box. On iPad, tap the insert icon on the top left of the on-screen keyboard. Special characters can also be inserted using your operating systems features for typing emojis and symbols, or by copying and pasting. Now let's have a quick look at this. Here's our index panel. You can see it over here on the left hand side, just there. Now I haven't got an index set up on this but we can have a look at the panel nonetheless. There's various options. Add topic, insert marker, delete a marker, insert index, update the index and show or hide index marks. Now that's fairly straightforward, that hasn't changed much. Language is auto, now select any of your languages there. Include section headers, group page ranges, and expand cross-references so that you've got choose whether cross-references within the generated index will list the page numbers of the references target instead of the name of the target. There you go. Labels and separators after topic. These are your la labels and separators so you can have any of those. Items between, between items. Any of those. So there are different markers that you can put in there and you can see the defaults are there, an M dash, a stop, C or C also, C also with any of those after them and that's just put an M dash after it so I'll type that out after, C also and after references. So they're all new additions to your indexing and you can make really useful nice indexes with that. So well thanks for watching this. It's been a little bit of a long um, tutorial but I hope you've discovered all you need to know about Affinity Publisher version 2 and just how good this
piece of software really is. It's very useful and very timely. Why bother with subscriptions when you don't need to? If you look out there now, you'll probably find it's even on uh, special sales. And these sales occur regularly, especially with Christmas time coming up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Make my day. Subscribe.